Well, we wanted to uh, do something quite a bit stronger than he's been doing up till this point. And, uh, three weeks before the Stephen Foster, he had a really nice work from the half mile pole all the way back around to the three quarter pole, obviously six furlongs. And we tried to reproduce it the best we could. And the numbers almost match up to what they did in the, in the summer. So um, went off comfortably, had targets to catch, caught them after the wire, and actually split them, went between them, and galloped out really strong to, or actually worked down uh, to the three quarter pole. And, and was up to the five ace pole, so um, went well. Miguel was thrilled to death how he went, like the way he cooled out. I, I think we're kind of back where we need to be, or where we need to be at this point. What's the sense going into this Breeders' Cup Classic versus when you came in with um, Blaine? Blaine was coming off of uh, second place finish. In yeah. The, well, we took a different approach mainly because of a different type of horses and b the. The schedule difference was that with the pandemic uh, got a little bit awkward for everybody. Um, the Whitney was earlier, the, the Jockey Club was later, the Fayette wasn't quite right. So uh, my gut feeling said to go in fresh anyway. And then when all the, the last round of stake races came out, I didn't like the way they were placed and that kind of stuff. So we just stuck with our original plan to train them up to it. So it's just a different approach, a different type of horse. Blaine was four, and this is E7, and uh, Blaine was quite a bit more straightforward than uh, Tom Zetai is on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, being just with the things you have to deal with. with you know, his feet bug him a little bit, and he's got some arthritis associated with his surgeries he's had. So it's just it's different. Uh, I mean, the excitement's there, but it's just different type of horses, that's all. Yeah, um, yeah. To reflect on his last race when just well, I mean, it was sort of over at the start. And, yeah, know. that's you know, there you can only prepare for all you can prepare for, and actually, even as long as I've been doing this, the start doesn't ever enter in my mind when you go to maybe the first time starter when you go into a race, especially at Grade One, and everything was good. He came up to it properly, and obviously it was even money, and I actually like the outside draw, the six out of six, but. You know, we knew him probably was a bad actor, especially on the road, and um, he lost his focus in the gate, and probably did, which caused us to lose our focus a little bit. And I think the starter lost his focus on the rest of the field by staring at improbable, and when he took it, our head was up and twisted, and hence the terrible break. And even though I, uh, Joel, what, what did you think Joel would do? He just sat back there and let him gather himself up and came home in 34 and 34 and 4 and just you know, had too much to overcome against a ridiculously slow pace. Under normal circumstances, we would have been right there on the outside hip of uh, Mr. Buff, I guess it was, who's out there uh, trying to, you know, going so slow. So it just was unfortunate, that's all. Yeah, but he'd have had to have been Dr. Fager sprinting to come home. Yeah, of course. Yeah, fast enough was. to win. I mean, how do you go faster than 34? And right, right. No, no, it was, a, it was an impossible task. Uh, but I think Joel did the right thing with him by just, you couldn't, I'd rather make that last move than go 34 and change from the, you know, the, the three-quarter pole to the three-eighths pole or something and, and empty him out. I, he kept him going forward and, you know, certainly that he's certainly, I was certainly in good bounce off of that race. He said it wasn't his best race and it, and it was certainly a long enough time ago. So we're going for the uh, freshness and just trying to get him to peak at the right time and obviously we're looking for a career effort. And it has been, uh, I mean, Obviously, COVID's impacted a lot of horses, but it seems like this horse we've talked about before, you'd find out after entries closed for something that, like, you know, this track canceled or that track canceled, like, you know, Keeneland, and you missed the race at Arkansas, and the, then they changed the distance of the... the blame, right. Of the blame, yeah. yeah. Everything and, and you, we had in mind got got squashed or changed. Literally every, every race we had in mind, uh, except for... I think the Stephen Foster was originally going to be the last weekend of the meet. It I was, think. but you thought they, you were going to have a prep for it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, I know, I know. Every race, yeah, every every race we uh, thought about uh, kind of changed at the last minute. So, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we're here and we feel like we're in the right spot.